Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at the Hack Reduce launch in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where it's the epicenter of big data. And we're here with Scott Hauser, who's with Adapt. Scott, good to see you again. Good to see you as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, what do you think of this, uh, this, this event? Hack Reduce, a lot of innovation here, a lot of young startups. You guys are supporting it. What's going on there? So, you know, one of the things I'm really excited about, not to be repetitive, I'm sure you've heard this a number of times tonight, but look at the response from the community. The governor's here. We've had a lot of, you know, people talking about innovation and incubating startups and bringing the, you know, the brain power here to Boston. So it's a really exciting response to, to what's taking place here. Yeah, so we were down at Strata a couple weeks ago. Adapt won the Innovation Award uh, for Best Startup. So congratulations on that. And um, so you guys made a big announcement at Strata, and you got some company, so that's always good. You know, you get confirmation. There's a lot of buzz around your announcement. Obviously, Cloudera you know, made an announcement going after the similar space. Talk about what the reaction has been in the marketplace to your announcement. So I think one of the things that we saw in the market, and one of the reasons we positioned things the way we did and started to develop down the path that we did a few years ago, was this notion that we wanted to take Hadoop from um, the sort of you know, uh, Skunk Works project or in the lab and really accelerate it into production. And the way we were going to do that was with interactive, you know, interactivity and giving these applications that could run on top of Hadoop. So based upon the response we got from the market, we went down that path and we've had incredible response where integrating with Tableau and other industry standard tools and doing it in an interactive fashion has really opened up opportunities for customers to really look at and, and to try to experience what big data could be for them and for their markets to say, you know, no longer are they bound by whether it's, you know, I've got a legacy application I'd like to add some big data elements to, but I've got this one entity or world that runs in an analytic database, and I've got this other entity that runs in this, you know, Hadoop world, but I can't bring them together, so I'm sort of, you know, chicken and egg problem. We've alleviated that, and we've seen a lot of very positive response from customers and from early prospects, you know, buying into that vision and taking advantage of that and, and testing the software with it. Scott, one of the unique things about you as a, as a marketing executive is you come from a practitioner world, so you bring that customer perspective. So. My question to you is, first of all, we know that, that legacy data warehouse is, is broken, it's a mess, it's a patchwork, it's a real problem for customers. What are customers telling you about their legacy environment, their data warehouse environment, specifically in the context of big data? Where are they and where are they trying to get to? I think the reality is there are so many applications that have been built over the last 25 years that people are experiencing this challenge of how do I begin to um, integrate these big data concepts, but the architectures are bound with those applications and unfortunately the architectures don't allow them to let the applications evolve. And so they're looking for ways to help take those applications and let them evolve, which is why I think what we've done with Hadapt is very unique in that we can take those legacy applications and allow them to run inside a Hadoop framework and then add these evolving technologies on top of it. So building an, an architecture or a framework that allows you to take advantage of the, this evolving concept really unlocks the potential that customers are looking for. And frankly, you know, you mentioned it, the legacy architectures, the reality is people don't want to continue to spend the way they have on these legacy architectures, right? You spend 20, 30, 40 million dollars a year on a platform that binds you to a very specific subset of applications you can employ with any sort of interactivity or intelligence or the ability to empower a knowledge worker. And that's part of the, you know, it's part of the, the previous generation and what this environment and Hack Reduce is all about and what Hadapt is all about is breaking down those walls and giving people access not just to the technology but to all of this data, right? And the governor said it, right? It's taking that data and being able to extrapolate or distill information from that to make informed decisions and to build wisdom. And that's what we've done at Hadapt is take all of that, that idea of these data sets and these sources and this notion of structured and unstructured data, and we've given customers the ability to empower their knowledge workers, their analysts, by enabling that through one unified platform. Yeah, so, you know, the promise of big data is really that we can put information and insights in the hands of, of the business users. It didn't really happen, it didn't happen with the data warehouse and the BI crowd. It really was sort of a mystery. Yeah, you'd get a template, you get reports, you get a cube maybe, but to change it was really difficult. Talk about your vision as to whether or not big data, the industry, adapt, 
can actually live up to that promise of, of putting those actionable insights into the hands of business users. Well, I think that's part of the, the entire vision is how do we help customers evolve the architecture to be from you know this legacy methodologies that they've applied for the previous problems of the last couple of decades and look at this as an opportunity to cross the chasm and embrace a, a, a new architecture and make real um, considerable change in that infrastructure to begin to open up the opportunities that you know otherwise would be you know impenetrable for them. So you're saying your value proposition is it's not a rip and rip place. Okay, matter, no. but so put yourself in the shoes of a practitioner again. So you've got this data warehouse, it's a patchwork. How do you, re what do you recommend to practitioners like you used to be? How do they get from point A to point B? Yeah, I think it's a fantastic question. You're right. I mean, would I love to walk in the door and say, hey, forget everything you've done for the last 25 years? Yeah, of course I would, right? It'd be great for me, but it, it's not realistic for the business today. I think what we have to do is focus on applications that have that you know, value that could be derived from adding big data elements, whether it's things like sentiment analysis or text search or social integration or machine learning or you know, the list goes on and on. But I believe that if you can pinpoint the applications that will have value, drive value from that sort of capability, and you start to, to integrate them into a new architecture, I think slowly the organization begins to migrate more and more applications and workloads to an evolving architecture, and they become less dependent on the legacies. But I, I don't believe that, you know, as you mentioned it before, right? you were not going to walk in the door and rip everything out, replace it, because it's just not, it's not advantageous to the business to do that on day one. But like many disruptions that we've seen in the past, at the growth rates, Chris Lynch today claimed that the big data market was $100 billion. And if you, if you project that out, growing at a very rapid rate, I mean, it's, it's potentially, you know, growing to 50%, maybe even faster each year. It's really a hard market to count because there's so much innovation going on in the customer base. Do you see, you know, in the next five years or so, where the big data tail that's wagging the dog today will actually flip and more value will be created out of the big data applications and infrastructure than the traditional legacy infrastructures. I absolutely do because I think you're seeing the early onset of that and you're seeing firms that are embracing this sort of technology and this market shift and the ones who are early adopters are experiencing incredible strides, not just in what I would say is maybe customer experience or revenue growth, but they're also seeing benefits in things like product development, right? how their products evolve, how they are able to better serve customers, and I think the innovation curve is impacted in many dimensions by the, the, this whole big data innovation. So, you know, it's not just, you know, what I would consider single dimensional, like if you think about what a data warehouse does and it provides reports to a user to say, we sold this many widgets yesterday and here's what the impact of the market was or the, to the market cap or whatever. Now we're taking and providing people with insights that are, you know, interactive in nature and that can take dimensions that were never possible before. So that can have impacts on every facet of the business. So yeah, I, I do believe that it's possible. And my last question is, um, when you think about creating value, that's one thing. The other element is sustaining that value creation for competitive differentiation. How would you recommend big data practitioners actually do that? What should they focus on to be able to to, to get that sustainable, differentiable advantage? That, that's a great question. And what I think has to happen, right, there's a lot of talk about data scientists and practitioners, et cetera. I don't think that the, the necessity for those resources will catch up in the near term with the demand. I think what has to happen is people have to look at and embrace platforms that are differentiated today and will give them an opportunity to embrace or invoke some of those advanced analytic capabilities through the platform and the technology that they deploy as opposed to relying on an individual to do it for them. I think the faster that you make that decision or, or you, you can reconcile that decision that you're going to have to look at the problem through a different lens than you have in the past and you're willing to adopt some of that, the faster you can begin to adopt or migrate to, down that path to a sustainable you know, technical advantage and business advantage. Hey, Scott, thanks very much for coming on and sharing your perspectives. Great seeing you. Congratulations on the Hack Reduce launch, and we'll see you around. Thank you very much. Take care. We'll see you All soon. Right, take care. Uh, keep it right there. Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back from the Hack Reduce event in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Big data after dark.